Superman dreams of an alternate Earth where Lois ever died and their baby was born. In this reality, Batman was sent to prison for killing the, the Joker. As the years pass by, the baby becomes more powerful and develops an idealistic approach to saving humanity. Desiring to save the world from itself, she decides to work with humanity for a better tomorrow. However, back in the real in the on the real earth, Superman's Justice League try desperately to awaken him from this dream. Wonder Woman awakens from her dream state, having dreamt of Superman. She finds a changed world where Green Lanterns are yellow and Batman has captured several members of her team. Superman is then awoken by errors, leading to Super Superman talking with Wonder Woman. Batman attempts to appeal to his son, only for Damien to reject him. The Justice League then attack the Tower of Fate. Elsewhere, Nightwing, now the new Dead Man, discovers that Jim Co that Jim Corrigan appears to be Jokerified. As Superman's forces battle against Batman's, Constantine summons Trigon, who seeks his daughter. Nightwing talks to Batman, revealing that Spectre has been taken over by Mr. Mysterpix, the fifth dimension villain. As Trigon and Mysterpix continue their battle, Batman's forces and Superman's forces resume their battle, with Swamp Thing entering the fray. Who will win this battle, and will our heroes perish as Trigon and Mystifix attempt to destroy reality. In the Injustice Year 3 annual, set prior to the events of Injustice Year 3, Batman recruited Rose and Doctor, two members of the occult, who acquire a mystical artifact that sent Wonder Woman in into an eternal sleep. Dr. Occult teams up with Constantine to, try to capture Raven, but Constantine gets Dr. Occult and kills him, which in turn kill Rose. Three years, <clears throat> three years earlier, we see the Teen Titans during the nuclear blast that resulted in the destruction of Metropolis, as seen in Injustice Volume 1. Superboy, Beast Boy and Kid Flash were travel are revealed to be travelling to Metropolis when the blast hit. As Superman began his rise to power, Superboy sought to use the Phantom Projector after, di after disagreeing with Superman's new philosophy. What happened to Superboy, and did he ever defeat Superman? Um, this this volume is a lot better than the previous volume, um, of Year Three. Um, I think it does help. Um, the fact that um this side of the volume is all action orientated. So, um, I didn't get confused about the whole magical side of, of the DC stuff. So, let's try and get into this book. Um, there's a bit, um, the beginning of this volume establishes, um, Superman's dream. Um, that happened because Superman was put to sleep in the last volume. Um, and Superman basically imagines a reality where Lois Lane somehow survived and their child was born. And this child became a sort of superhero slash environmentalist. 
and it really does portray what Superman lost, um, and sort of showed um, a lot about what he lost and about how he lost, you know, sort of what he lost, and you know, we sort of we sort of appreciate Superman, and it brings Superman back to becoming a more human esque character. Because um, Injustice has really, has really been portraying Superman as a villain. I mean, one of the things that, is, I, that I love about Injustice is, although Superman is becoming a supervillain, you still do see his side of things. And it deepens his character. Um, in fact, one of the things that you notice about this character is the difference between his his costumes and the differences in his future and um, because it looked like um we were seeing like the king that may, maybe the kingdom come version of um of superman what a, a more lightened version of that character um and it was really really interesting to see his daughter being an an environmentalist was a bit weird. I felt like um, the the daughter being an environmentalist um, was sort of very very weird. Um, the book did slightly kind of deviate and turn into more about the environment type book. But again, I really really liked the the the, the Superman story. Um, we also get to see Wonder Woman's dream as well, um, and but the Wonder Woman um, the, the Wonder Woman dream is less compelling for the character, and this is where my first complaint comes in. Um, Wonder Woman was sort of um, sidelined um, a lot, like she only appears like just now. Um, and she didn't really appear in volume two um, and was sort of taken out um, at the end of Injustice Year One, volume two. Um, so, this being the first introduction, you know, reintroduction of her character back into this universe, I felt like her desiring to be with Superman was kind of a bit stupid really um but more into her head a bit more you know and and what and what she's going through um I'm hoping that we're gonna see a lot of that next um in the next in year four because I think it I think next volume is going to be more Wonder Woman centric and I do think Wonder Woman needs to be um, shown shown a lot, lot more. The stuff going on with Constantine was absolutely fascinating. Um, first off, the Injustice Annual really helps explain Constantine's motives for in you know throughout this storyline you know, throughout year three. Um, the annual really, really helps, um, helps, um, show that understanding and get into Constantine's head a bit more. And really, Constantine was really, really good in this volume. But I did kind of feel like Constantine did a lot of just sitting around talking and barking orders and not enough doing things. Constantine is very much like Loki in that regard. Constantine is basically a con artist and that's all he's playing in this volume. Is He's playing a long game to get to what he wants. He doesn't want to be part of this war between Batman and Superman. He doesn't want to be part of the civil of the DC Civil War. 
I really, really liked with how Constantine plays his plays the game um, to get the outcome that he wants. Um, another great thing that I loved about this book was um, Swamp Thing and Poison Ivy. Um, Swamp Thing is not a character I know very well, um, but what I found really compelling was was how Swamp Thing and Poison Ivy were sort of paired up. Um, I never really thought about it, and I, I, I do think maybe Poison Ivy might inherit the green because of her of her relationship with plants. Um, and it sort of it sort of pseudo implied that these two characters could have been in like some kind of relationship, and I just I really really thought it was very interesting. Um, another thing that I liked was Nightwing's speech at the end about you know just thanking him for everything that he's done for him, and it. It was a really, really sweet moment in the story, and um, it's definitely one of the highlights for this, um, for this, for this year. The one thing I do have to kind of say is I did think this would sort of show the end of magic in a way, um, and sort of distance injustice from all of the other different realities. Um, such as hell and heaven and that kind of stuff, and it doesn't do that, and it does kind of make sense, but it, but it, it's something that I would have done if I was writing Injustice, is I definitely would have made this the arc that cut magic out of DC, because when Buffy and Charmed, you know, when Buffy did it for um season 8 and basically cut magic out of the the universe but the universe it was such an interesting idea and I did kind of think that that's what was going to happen for um, Injustice Year 3 and Constantine especially being the cause of that I just think would have been very very interesting but it does make sense that magic wasn't completely cut off from the Injustice universe. All in all guys, I have to give this a 4.5 out of 5. It was very very good and a definite nice end to um, to the overall year. Do stay tuned for reviews on Injustice Year 4. Um, I will definitely review that first volume when it comes out um, and I will try and be a lot more faster with the reviews um, for Injustice Year 3. But, but, but all in all guys that's pretty much all I want to say about that. So I'm Rob and that's one here and I shall see you all later for another comic book review. Bye.